Hi Joey, I just thought I'd make a quick little video to show you um, a, a little setup you can do if you're going to be making um, little still lives or little studies of different things that you want to choose to draw. This helps you control the light and it also kind of isolates whatever you're drawing um, in its own separate space. So this is a box that I had used. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a small box. It's probably only about 15 feet, 15 inches from one side to the other. And um, I just kind of cut the sides down at a slant. And what this does, it kind of makes a little stage for you to, to set your things on. Um, underneath, this is a more permanent one that I have. It's, a, it's just made out of plywood. And it's just meant to um, help hold your things so that they are separated and so that the, the, it's a little more isolated. Um, I have mentioned an apple box. So this is what an apple box looks like at the grocery store. Um, usually in the produce section after they finish at our store, after they finish stocking the apples and oranges and bananas and things, they put these boxes aside so that um, anybody can come and pick them up and they usually have a huge stack of them and they're great. They're very sturdy boxes. Um, we've used tons of them over the years. Um, I'm pretty fussy about mine. I try to choose ones that don't have handles and don't have any openings in them so that dust and dirt and things can't get in. So back to this little setup here. Um, what this setup does, you can see right now the light's coming in from the right. It's coming in from a window. And if I wanted to do a drawing, there's a couple things I can do now. I could leave it brown, and I've in some of my art classes that I've taken, we've had just had brown cardboard backgrounds. Um, another thing we can do, this is a piece of fleece that it's very thick, and the reason I chose it was because it's it's so it's got such a um, it's a fleecy texture, so it's very velvety looking, and um, it doesn't create a lot of wrinkles and things that you have to think about. So it makes a very dark dark background. If you want to draw something and then just color the background in completely dark. Um, a piece of black fleece works wonderfully. So let's say you wanted to draw a polar bear and he, we could set him on there. And then now when we look at it, we can see really clearly if we squint at it, it because he's up against a completely black background, it's real easy to see where it's light and medium and dark. I mean, look back here on his tummy, it looks like it just kind of curves underneath and it, and it just kind of gets real shadowy. And that also enables us to turn it and decide if, if that's the kind of angle that we like. There have been times where I've covered, if I draw during the day, I've covered up the window with um, black fabric so that that light source is no longer coming in. And I do have a light that's right there. Actually, two lights. I'll show you one first. So if that's our, the regular light, you can see that changes the light source coming from a little more from behind. And now he's kind of lit up a little more um, in the front, and the back is a little bit more in shadow. And I also because sometimes I paint and color is important. Um, this is a more of an incandescent light, so it's a little bit more golden. And then sometimes I use this light, and I think it's plugged in. Where's my switch? And that's a little bit more of a, um, of a full spectrum light. Kind of the same orientation, but it, it's a little bit more of a truer, truer um, daylight color if, uh, for when I'm painting, okay? So that, those are some options um, to help control the light source. And you can see how dramatic that would be if I decided to paint him up against a black background. It's very stark, and then I would color the whole background in dark. Okay, so let's put the polar bear away. There's other, other shapes and textures and things that I have. This is one, one thing that would be cool um, on a black background. It's, it's um, just a cheap thing I got from Goodwill, but it's a, very, it's a blue glass and very golden on the bottom, but look how different it looks when it's on, when it's on the black velvet. So it would be very subtle, very soft, very crooked, um, if I was going to make a painting of that. And actually that looks pretty intriguing. Okay, so you can see how it changes the, the objects that you're drawing. And if you're drawing a sphere, you can make it so that it's kind of shining in the light. Well, not quite so much there. Maybe if I had the light coming in the window, it would show a little better. Okay, another option is to not have black on the background. This was a fabric that I put on here because it's a very warm golden color. And sometimes you want something a little more golden. Now it's a little, it's not quite as thick and velvety looking as the, as the fleece would be. But it does kind of show a little bit more of a soft golden color. And that changes how things look. I hope this isn't making you dizzy watching this. So you can see this is a whole different kind of look. Now we have some, sh whoops. <laughs> Some shading and shadows to think about um, underneath. Look at there's some deep shadows underneath that would make him look more 3D. 
and he's got the light source coming from behind and then some other shadows here that are coming from the light source coming from this direction and if we look how that changes what this looks like let's see if this make sure that doesn't tip over now we have a little bit more definite look and we can see some more details on it that might make it a more interesting painting okay so those are some things you can think about if you want to make one of these you don't have to go and buy any kind of special fabric um, anything you have if you have an old t-shirt that would work but that's the basic of what it looks like inside if you wanted to even um, in some of the art classes I've taken they've just been lined with white paper and that would give it a, a different look as well and help with some different reflected light and and um, would make the object show up show up really well so those are some ideas for setting up for a still life to help you control your light and to do different um, dark dark things in the background like the black fleece and then the light colors to help you give you give a whole different look to your drawings thanks joy good luck <laughs>